Um, yeah. Thanks, everyone, and welcome to today's Ask Me Anything for the Gilman Scholarship Program. I am Courtney Castillo, and I am the Campus Liaison and Selection Manager with the Gilman Scholarship Program. And today we are joined by two very special guests, Laura Clifford from Middle Tennessee State University. She um, works with international and national fellowships at the university and also Gelman Scholar Diamond who will be here sharing more about her experience and tips and tricks for y'all. We are discussing essays today so you're in for a real treat um, but before we get started with the bulk of our section I do want to just give you some updates and go over a little bit more about the Gilman Scholarship. So um, we are here every Thursday on Zoom during the open application and also don't forget Tomorrow on Fridays, we have Instagram live sessions for Ask Me Anything um, at 3 Eastern, and we'll be joined by Gilman Alumni Ambassadors for those sessions. And as many of you already know, the March 22 deadline application is open, and this application is for programs that start between May 1st, 2022 through April 30th, 2023. And the application deadline for you all is Tuesday, March 1st at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Advisors do need to certify your application after you submit, and so advisor certification deadline is one week after the student deadline, so um, advisors have until March 8th to certify. Now, um, we're going to go over eligibility requirements before we continue on, so just in case um, you all are unfamiliar, to be eligible for the Gilman Scholarship, you need to be a US citizen enrolled at an undergraduate institution in the US. Um, you need to be uh, not have received your degree before you go abroad. Um, you need to receive the federal Pell Grant either while you're applying for the Gilman Scholarship or while you're abroad. You also um, need to be going abroad to a country that is a level one or two travel advisory level. We have a select number of locations that are level three that are approved for travel. Um, but if you're concerned or have questions about the travel advisory levels, you can check on our website. We have more details about that. Um, also, there's no minimum program length for when you're abroad, which is really great. Um, and so that means you can be abroad for a week or two weeks, a whole month or two, up to an academic year. We're also supporting internships abroad. Um, so whatever you're doing abroad needs to be eligible for academic credit at your home institution. You don't need to opt to take the credit um, to use it toward your degree, but essentially it needs to be eligible to receive it either as a transfer credit or um, if there's a course that you could substitute the credit for. We're also allowing virtual programs. We are supporting those financially as well through start dates of April 30th, 2023. Um, also stay in touch with us via social media to receive the latest updates, reminders, and tips. We are on Instagram, on Twitter. We've got a Facebook handle as well. And so if you're not following us there, we highly recommend that you do. Um, so this March deadline is for programs that start between May 1st, 2022 through April 30th, 2023. And so you can think of it as summer 2022 if you're going to have your program then, for the fall 2022, the academic year 22-23, even spring 2023. Those programs are eligible for this cycle. Um, so we have three main essays that are required that you need to submit, and I'll go over those in just a minute. Um, and then we'll dive deeper into some tips and tricks for that. But we really encourage you while you're applying for Gilman to reach out to the resources that you have. It could be your advisors on campus, if you have a writing center on campus, um, professors or instructors that can help give you feedback on what you're writing on your essays. It's really, really important to get um, to get those tips and and updates to what you're writing so you can submit the best possible application that you can. Um, for those of you that are eligible for the Gilman McCain scholarship, if you are a child dependent of an active military member in the US um, military, then you're eligible for the Gilman McCain award, which is $5,000 to study or intern abroad. Um, 
and you also need to be receiving federal for financial aid. So if you're not sure about that, reach out to your financial aid office. But we really encourage folks who are eligible for Gilman McCain to also submit an application. Um, the Gilman scholarship, you can receive scholarships to study and intern abroad of up to $5,000. If you're studying a critical need language in a country in which it's predominantly spoken, you are eligible to receive an additional up to $3,000 to um, study abroad for that. And receiving the Gilman scholarship is not just a financial award that you get, but you're also um, really folded into the alumni community um, and you have a lot of support after you study abroad. So the Gilman Scholar Network is one of those examples of um, alumni benefits for the Gilman scholarship. And so we really encourage you all to join, um, apply for the Gilman scholarship and hopefully you can receive one. But let me go ahead and just talk a little bit more about the essays that are required for the application. So all applicants are required to submit three essays. The first is the statement of purpose essay. And this essay is really your chance to share about who you are, where you're coming from, your academic, professional, personal goals, and how your study abroad really fits in with that. And so um, we, want you to share more about why you're deciding to do what you're doing. And actually on the Gilman website, we have the essay prompts and additional follow-up questions for you to answer. So I'm actually gonna go and show you where on the website you can find these things. And so here um, it's the Gilman website and you can see the applicant section. And on the applicant section is the essays page. And so on this essays page, it outlines the, the three required essays and also the optional essay for the Critical Need Language Award. And additionally, we have tips on here from the program, um, but also more questions for each essay that we really encourage you to answer. So um, you'll find them on here, the additional questions under each essay. The first three are required, the Statement of Purpose essay, the Building Mutual Understanding essay and the follow-on service project proposal. We even have examples of follow-on service project proposals for you here on our website. And then also if you are studying a critical need language in a country in which it's predominantly spoken, if you'd like to be eligible for that additional up to $3,000, you would need to um, write one more essay to be considered for that. But I'll um, show more on the essays later on our website. But since we have Laura and Diamond here, I want to just go ahead and jump in with hearing more from them and just getting their great feedback and um, tips. But before we uh, do that, we do have one question that's come in. So I want to just um, answer that. And so we have a question about study programs in the United States. So the Gilman Scholarship is for programs that are outside the US. So unfortunately, locations like Hawaii or Puerto Rico um, would not be eligible since those are US states and territories. And we do actually award students from institutions in those states to receive a Gilman Scholarship. So um, any other questions though, y'all keep typing them in the chat and we will get to them. But I'm gonna go ahead and kick things off and ask Laura, what is your number one piece of advice on how to start writing Gilman essays? I think my number one piece of advice would be to go long. And let me explain that. Um, when people look at the Gilman essays, a lot of times their first drafts leave a lot of things out. You do not uh, submit a resume for the Gilman. So if you want anything from your resume, if you want anything from your academics, your personal journey, you need to write it into the essay. So I think it's very freeing to say to a student, don't worry about how long it is. Don't just focus on that good content. Focus on sharing stories. Focus on sharing examples about yourself. You can trim the essay later, but if you leave that strong content out on that first draft, then the readers won't know how wonderful you are. So go long on that first essay. And, and Diamond and I talk about that all the time. I love that, Laura. And especially with um, Super Bowl right around the corner, it's a very 
great recommendation. So Diamond, um, when you were thinking about going long for your essay, like how did that impact you and what you were thinking about writing? Did that change your approach to preparing for your essays for the Gilman Scholarship? Um, when I was thinking about when Mrs. Clipper told me to go long, um, honestly, that was very challenging. Um, I'm so used to writing and being very curt and concise. Um, especially with being an international relations major. And so I often limited myself to the word count um, when I first um, wrote my original draft essays, um, especially on the personal statement, for example, that was the hardest one for me um, because I realized that going through, you know, this like strict and concise um, writing process would really caused me to struggle with actually putting in necessary content that I felt people wanted to see from me. Great, yeah. And so going long, working with Laura on your essays, I mean, definitely paid off though. I mean, Laura, do you have any other things to add on that or? Um, I mean, I guess you do not want your essays to be generic. And that is a common thing that I see in first drafts or even second drafts is the student will say, I really want to study abroad. I want to learn about the history and it's going to help my academics. So if, if I can take my thumb and cross out the, I'm see, I'm holding my thumb up very dramatically. If I can put my finger over the name of the country in your essay and slide another country in, then you haven't adequately described to me why you want to go to that particular country. So you also want to avoid being generic. You want to tell the, the readers about yourself and why the study abroad is meaningful. So, you know, stories, examples are, are really key to helping the reader understand you. That's really great. And it kind of leads us into our next question, um, Laura, about common mistakes that you see Gilman applicants make regarding their essays. Can you share more about, about that as um, you advise students, but then also through selection, the process that, that you go through for that? Well, I think a couple of common mistakes, um, and hopefully the people attending this workshop will not do that don't wait until the last minute, okay? <laughs> because then you don't have the luxury of trimming. I, I think Diamond started hers extremely early, um, even before Gilman opened. Uh, so, you know, start your essays early and um, focus on, you know, if you say something about yourself, like I'm a lifelong learner or Give an example that backs that up for the readers. Help them understand what makes you tick. So I think stories and example are, are really key. Great. Yeah, I liked um, your example of if you could use your thumb to cross out the country name and just insert any other one um, that is just too generic. So I think that's a really, really good point on that. So we have... Um, Three required essays, like I mentioned. The first is a statement of purpose. I think we really talked about that in terms of how it's the applicant's opportunity to share about their story, about who they are, where they're coming from. Another essay that we require for the application is the mutual understanding essay. And so this mm -hmm. one's a little bit more tricky because it makes it makes one think about what it means to be a citizen diplomat, what it means for cultural exchange. Laura, can you give us more tips on how applicants can start thinking about this essay? Yes, I think the biggest thing is to, to not, and Diamond can chime in on this, not to be intimidated by it. Because I will have students come in my office and they look at the criteria, which is on the Gilman website. And part of the criteria is they want to send diverse students with diverse backgrounds overseas. And they'll say, I don't have anything diverse about myself. And I'll say, well, weren't you raised on a farm? And, you know, didn't you raise chickens? Um, aren't you from a small town? And so we'll really dig down into their background and everybody has something that they can contribute and that represents the U.S. in a positive way. Um, the other part of the, the mutual understanding is to think about how you will interact once you are over there. And I think that's very confusing for students. And I think about it two ways, either short-term or long-term. If you are doing a short-term study abroad, chances are your faculty is arranging things, okay? So a good example is I had a student who got the Gilman who was going to Vienna for music. 
Well, his mutual understanding and interactions are probably going to be around talking to musicians as he attends concerts. So think about the factors in your study abroad. If you're doing a longer study abroad, maybe you're doing a homestay, look at the university, what clubs do they have? Think about how you're gonna really interact outside of your professor and outside of your group. That's great. Yeah, so Diamond, for you, how was is, how is this essay? Was it intimidating? What kind of um, suggestions do you have for our applicants when it comes to approaching this one? Uh, I found the, the um, essay intimidating, um, but what helped me the most when writing was um, thinking about, um, like Laura said, a story um, that, that I could kind of frame um, the essay around. So, for example, I used a um, used a story from when I was in elementary school, and my teacher was teaching about um, what makes what makes Americans American. Um, is it one race, one class, one idea? And so I kind of um, bolted off of that and framed my essay around my experience in Spain previously. Um, I went in 2017 as a freshman in high school and I re really was unfamiliar with the culture and the language. And so I compared um, one of my favorite dishes in Spain, paella, um, to American jambalaya. And so it has all of these different ingredients and different um, components within the dish, but they all share some sort of similarity. And so I kind of used that to frame it is even though I am an American going to Spain and I, I'm, I may be unfamiliar with the culture, um, I know that Spain is similar to our country. And so there's, you know, there's Catalan, there's many different languages, many different people. And so I felt like that diversity would help me understand and kind of foster cultural understanding between myself and other Spanish people. Yeah, that's really great. It, and I think too, in our everyday lives here in the U.S., we also are building mutual understanding between us and other people around us. So really just being aware of that can help our applicants think about the mutual understanding essay and when they're in a in different context, when they're in a different country, different location, how they can continue to learn more about others and help others learn more about them and um, the U.S. and how what they represent. Um, with the U.S. So that's really, really great. Um, we have another under, um, essay for building mutual understanding, essentially, um, but it's the follow-on service project. And so when students are returning, after you return from your time abroad, we want you all to continue the cultural exchange, but this time kind of in reverse. So bringing back what you've experienced abroad and applying it to your home community, to your home institution, places that you're involved in that can really learn more about the world that's around us without them having to actually go themselves. So um, for, for you, Diamond, what did you write about for your follow-on service project? Can you share more about that? Um, so for my follow on service project, um, I really wanted to focus on um, informing people about the Gilman Scholarship in an accessible way. Um, so I like resorted to using social media and um, the Office of Education Abroad at my school usually does Instagram takeovers um, for students that have studied abroad to showcase their program or um, when they're while they're in the country to showcase, you know, what they learned, um, their everyday activities and just life in general in their in their countries. Um, and so I have been seeing that, as Laura said, I started my essays, like, I think, a few months before the Gilman application cycle. And so I would always go to our um, Office of Education Abroad Instagram account, and I would see, you know, people in Spain, people in Ghana, and all different parts of the world, and just, you know, realizing how how expansive it was and, and learning so much about how people funded their study abroad. And so I really wanted to stick kind of in a similar format to that. Um, and so for my service project, I planned on doing an Instagram takeover, but I also signed up for my um, program providers um, international student blog um, to really kind of um, finalize some of those details and uh, allow myself to be available to other students like myself who are low income or receiving the Pell Grant that could be able to um, utilize the resources that I use and learn more about the Gilman through that. Yeah, that's really great. It's a really great way to give back and help others go abroad. Um, but Laura, do you have any tips for the follow-on service project? Anything that you ask students mm -hmm. to think about when preparing for that essay and that, that plan? Usually I ask them what they're already involved with because when students think about doing a follow-on service project, you know, 
they think, oh, I need to do something really elaborate. If you are active in the biology club, if you are a tutor, if you are active, um, you, you go visit your high school occasionally, you know, think about what you're already involved with and use those pre-existing networks um, to, to develop your project because those people will know you and those people are going to be very interested in your education abroad experience. Um, now, students do do projects outside of that, but I, I tell them to start with what they're already involved with. Yeah, I think that's a really great stepping stone, really great foundation. Um, Cause it, it's natural too, right? If you're already involved in a particular group, whether it's an interest you have or something that you're studying, um, you're also more comfortable, generally speaking. So it's not as intimidating for you to open up and share about your experiences. So I think that's really great advice for that. Um, so we still have some time in the application before it's due. And I know that students are looking at programs around the world and there's still some uncertainty in terms of um, what to pick for, for the program that they wanna go on. Um, but Laura, what kind of advice would you give an applicant uh, in terms of getting started on their essays if they haven't yet confirmed the program that they're going to be studying mm -hmm. on? Um, I think we have a lot of resources for students. So if, um, you know, you would start probably with the study abroad or education abroad website. Um, I know our website has a description of programs. Um, if you are interested in a particular university overseas, take some time, find like Diamond is going to join the blog at the university she's going to, find out what resources are available there, um, look at the possible classes, and if, if a student has been to that particular area before, ask them. You want to be able to at least outline in your essay on that first draft what particular details are drawing you forward. And if you don't have it 100% confirmed, at least you can start sketching it out. Yeah, I think that's really great. Really great to prepare. Um, and then along the same lines of preparing, uh, many institutions have different resources available to students when they're writing essays, but for folks who don't have a writing center or an office that's dedicated to reviewing essays, where would you suggest that they go to for support and feedback as they're preparing for their application? Well, the first thing that they should do is they should print off the Gilman website what the criteria is, okay? And so the criteria for Gilman, I have it here, um, the impact of your study abroad, uh, community impact, academic preparedness, and your diversity of background. So you want to have that in hand, okay? And then I would probably start with faculty, okay? Faculty at your university are gonna wanna support you. Um, you could even go back to a high school teacher, but start with your faculty at your university. You could also think about friends and family. Um, I know that my mother would have done an extraordinary job of proofing my essays, okay? Maybe not my father, but my mother would have, okay? So you, you might have people within your personal um, circle. It takes a community um, to make an essay strong. And so if you don't have a writing center, start with faculty. That's really great. And Diamond, for your essays, can you share with us about um, who you asked to review, what other feedback you received from others? I know Laura was very instrumental in guiding you for Gilman essays, but did you also reach out to other folks in your network? Uh, yes, I did. Um, apart from uh, the fellowship office, um, I reached out to other um, professors that I had, um, and I allowed, uh, sent, the, sent my essays to them as well. Uh, my mom, I also sent it to her. Anybody that I could really get to read the essays to give me feedback, I would ask. Even my siblings who know nothing about the Gilman Scholarship, I just, I, I think that was the best thing, getting feedback and actually understanding, like, how effective I am in writing. And so I went through countless numbers of drafts, um, countless different um, like different structures for essays um, because I, I really wasn't satisfied with my first draft. And, and Ms. Clipper will, will tell you when, you, when you're first writing, it's good to just get your ideas out on paper and then from there start building or cutting or um, chopping out phrases that you dislike um, and I think that was the, the best thing that I could have done was starting early. So I really emphasize that as well. Awesome. Yeah, we, we call that doing a brain dump, you know, take all that good stuff. And I guess I, I can't emphasize this enough. 
Gilman won't know unless you tell them. So if you have these things on your resume that you're very proud of, they also need to be written into your essays. Great. Thank you all so much. That's such good advice. Um, we are getting closer to our time end, so make sure y'all who have questions that you're typing them in the chat so we can get them answered live. Um, but again, I want to just pull up the Gilman website for you all. This is our essays page where you can see the essay guidelines we have. Um, and also the tips we have for writing competitive essays. For each of the required essays, we have questions to ask yourself. So we have five main questions that you can ask yourself about the statement of purpose essay. Are you making connections between um, your program and goals? How about your country and goals? So as Laura was saying, if you don't yet have a program confirmed, you can start looking into where you're going and really tie that into what where you want to go essentially for your goals. Um, also, I'll let y'all read these, but they're also on our website. So also about the building mutual understanding community impact essay. How are you articulating how you'll represent the US um, as a citizen diplomat while you're abroad, et cetera. And then the last one, five questions for your follow-on service project proposal. So as you write what your, um, your essays, check them against these questions that we're asking you. Do you have a detailed plan for your project? Do you have an intended audience? Not just shooting into the abyss of the internet of <laughs> sharing about Gilman. So really things to consider about the essays. And of course, the follow-up questions that we ask. These are also outlined in the application itself. And also, as Laura mentioned, if you um, are gonna take your essays to folks and have them review on the program page, on our overview, we have more details about the scholarship that give a background of, um, of Gilman. So that can give your support folks more information about what kind of program you're applying for, the scholarship and its benefits. So that's also um, really good to keep on hand. Um, but we are nearing our time together, like I mentioned. Um, okay, we have a question um about travel restrictions and so at this time during the application we are reviewing applications that for countries that are at levels three or four due to covid and we are just recommending all applicants if the country that they want to apply to is a level three or four due to covid and it's not a level one or two those have no restrictions for gilman if the country level is one or two um, to still submit your essay, your application, your essays too. You need to have essays in the application, but submit the application um, because we are able to award for countries uh, if they come off of that level three or four by the time of the program start. And we are really hoping that we're able to give a lot more funding out to students to go abroad. And so if the country that you're going to is still not eligible at the time of, of um, you're finding out about Gilman that you've received it, then you do have the option to essentially defer the funding to a later program that's still within the same application cycle. Um, or you can find a different program to participate on um, that meets the Gilman eligibility and you can still receive funding that way. But so we have to have the programs be eligible um, when they start to receive the funding, but we're really trying to be flexible with students as much as possible to fund more students to go abroad. So if you have more questions on that though, reach out to us um, at gilman at iie.org, which brings me to our contact information. Um, here you can see many ways to get in contact with us. You can email us, um, gilman at iie.org. You can give us a call. And reminders, we have the applicant deadline March 1st at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Advisors have until March 8th to certify. And we have links to the application and that essays page that I showed you here on the slide. And my last announcement before we go and say our thanks is that we have our AMA tomorrow on Instagram Live at three o'clock Eastern. And this week's alumni ambassador is Ben Guo, who went to the UK in 2019. Our Instagram handle is Gilman Scholarship, and we hope that y'all join us there. But I'm really grateful and thankful for Laura and Diamond joining us this afternoon to share more about writing essays and giving great tips for all of our applicants. And um, 
with that, I'm just going to say thank you all for joining us and I hope you'll have a great rest of your day. So take care y'all. Thanks and bye.